let's switch gears to our presentation. Um, as Jason mentioned, Tom Lynch, Director of Transportation for the City, is here to share with us an update on the Lake Street um, mixed use development um, parking garage and what's going on there. So, Tom, thank you so much for joining us again. Um, let's get right to it. Great. So, um, how will we do this? Um, I can just tell you. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll be your slide of answer. All right. Yes. Uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> Next, no, <that's> perfect. Okay. <laughs> so um, we we've actually uh, <clears throat> um, put out an RFP for uh, reconstruction of the Lake Street ramp or the State Street uh, campus ramp, along with a mixed use development. And so um, there were we had maybe seven, I think, submittals, and we selected uh, Mortensen. As uh, as the winning select selection, and so we are in negotiations with them right now. Uh, some of the advantage of this, you can see, this is uh, their rendering of it right now. It it converts about 200 feet of uh, parking garage to street frontage, and so the upper left you can see what it looks like now. Below is what we'd like <clears throat> to see it look like. Uh, we'd like to see if we could create a little bit more activity, you know, rather than this being really a Kind of the back door of a lot of buildings you know maybe this could be more look like a front door because the, the location is great right it's, it's, a, it's a great location um, uh, if you wouldn't mind speaking off just a little bit okay you. this red yeah. button is on is it, it is that's good yeah. that's good that's possible okay all right there we go okay i will speak up <laughs> oh no please advance the slide please advance the slide oh oh that's my job yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. did you hear him yeah. <laughs> Um, one thing it, it does do, um, when you think of it, perhaps from a business standpoint, is it does, it adds 600 residents to Lower State Street. So a lot of the campus housing is really, you know, pretty far west. And, and what this does is it, it just adds a, a little bit of uh, people that live, people that buy stuff uh, right there in the heart. Next slide. Uh, we do hope to have, uh, one of the reasons for the selection of this was for the simplified uh, park driveway flow. <clears throat> Some of the proposals had quite a few driveways on uh, Lake Street. And so what happened is um, if you're, let's say you're coming for a Badger game from Waukesha, right? And you want to park and you see four driveways in front of you and some of them's for the bus and some of them's for, you know, apartment residents and some of them's for public parking. It was just, some of them was confusing. So this actually was a little bit, had a little bit simpler flow uh, we had one parking entrance and exit uh, on, <clears throat> for the public parking, and then we had a uh, bus terminal exit. And then you can see that uh, we have some housing units frying Lake Street, and the parking is kind of kept in the back, so it, it, it doesn't dominate the, the street landscape. So, next slide. Hey, Jason, the slides are frozen. Um, oh. I want to just exit out and reshare. Or maybe that's just on my screen. I, I think you're right. I've got, I just got a warning. One second here. Let me just close everything else. Tom, was that the bus? It's on the bottom left of that last slide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I understand why. Sorry, Tom. Madeline, are you seeing inner city bus terminal across? Yeah. I'm not sure if it's <sighs> on my side or not, because it's still trying to share the screen and seems the like the last time we'll give you the <laughs> Tom, I think you're just gonna have to pantomime the rest of your presentation. Jason, do you want to send it to me and I can try sharing my screen? Did we lose connection? I don't think so. No, they're still there. They're muted. Jason is muted, so. 
the wonders of technology. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Jason, I believe you're still muted. Jason, you're still muted. There we go. Now we should be back up and going. Okay. Sorry for the inconvenience. All right. We're all really mad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just drank more coffee. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what, one of the, the thoughts and, and the goals is perhaps to have a, a bus terminal, maybe similar to what's Cross has they have an inner city bus terminal. You think about it, um, there's just an enormous number of people that get on buses, um, particularly like at the end of the, the semester. I just took a drive on Lake Street, you know, by Lake, Lake Street, and uh, just easy, you know, 200 people there waiting for buses. Really, uh, it was kind of the end, it was the end of school, so um, they provide a service for us. Uh, right now, they have to be out in the cold, in the rain, no bathrooms, uh, no real facilities. We'd like to perhaps create a better experience for that. Uh, next slide. Click. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Uh, this also uh, <clears throat> helps replace a, a 60 year old facility. Uh, these are some pictures that uh, Bill Putnam provided for me, uh, just show some of the, the deterioration. Uh, at, at the garage. And so it's, what we can do is we can do a kind of a win-win-win, right? We can provide some student housing. Uh, we can uh, add value to the, to the city block, uh, provide an inner city bus terminal and replace our garage. So, so uh, the original proposal, so this, I used a, a fair amount of animation. So you're gonna have to, oh. Get click in, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think you can see, actually, no, you, you can see. Yeah, so the, one of the, some of the problems with this is that it had only three buses, first for buses. Next. Next. Yeah, so I, see, I, I do this. Oh, I see. I do this progressive okay. disclosure, yes, which yes. isn't a problem if I have not. <laughs> <laughs> We're team time. All right. So uh, <clears throat> then about a third of the public stalls were underground, and they used a speed ramp to get underground. Mm -hmm. Next um, side there, uh, the private and the public parking was not necessarily separated. So um, the apartments had a, a, a parking allotment and it was mixed in with the public oh. parking, mm -hmm. which is a little bit more difficult to control. Next yeah. side. And then there were circulation problems, particularly right there. So <clears throat> while this had great advantages in that it didn't provide a lot of driveways on, on Lake Street. You could see that uh, if I wanted to go <clears throat> down, you know, to the parking below, as soon as I came in, I'd have to take a left turn and there could be queues there. Uh, why don't you, next slide. So this is an example um, that's very typical. In fact, any of you go to Hamilton? Yeah. Yeah, that was nice, wasn't it? I was, I was thinking, oh, that was, was nice. nice. Very nice. Yeah, last night? It's sold out. Oh, night before. Oh, I Tuesday was there. Night. Yeah, all right. So, but you know, the, the way that we have events, and mm -hmm. this this garage handles a lot of events. And when the yeah. event ends, then we get queues mm -hmm. that extend a couple floors up. And so this is a very typical um, <clears throat> thing where you have a queue that will extend up the floor. Almost in all circumstances, we would have a queue of two or three vehicles. And uh, next slide. And so uh, there you have the ramp to the lower levels. And so next thing is that uh, this could add to a, a fair amount of queuing. People wouldn't be able to get in and circulate in the garage whenever we had an exiting queue. Mm. Uh, next slide. Yeah, there we go. Um, sorry, I did so much progressive. I like this. This is good. Okay. Yeah, it is. 
is cool. Next, uh, next slide. We're just trusting each other more every <laughs> slide. <That's right. laughs> so uh, what we've done is we've done a, a little bit of modification so that all the public parking will enter and exit off the lake street. So you won't, um, and then, um, and then the next slide, um, all the private parking will be on the underground levels mm -hmm. and it will, uh, it will use a separate exit off of Hawthorne court. And so what we've done is we've separated, we've separated the public and the private <clears throat> and, um, so, you know, the, the private parking will be familiar users. You know, Hawthorne Court is a very narrow court, right? And so they'll be used to that. We won't be sending someone from Waukesha, you know, to go down to the basement. Okay, next uh, slide. The, um, yeah, the, <clears throat> the buses will, right now we think that they'll, they'll be entering on Hawthorne Court uh, and then exiting off of Lake Street with three bursts. Uh, next slide. Uh, to do this, what we'd like to do is we'd like to make <clears throat> Hawthorne Court one way northbound. So this is Hawthorne Court now. And it's hard to believe that it's actually a two way street. <laughs> yes, it is. You know? <laughs> so, I, mean, I, I, I actually street. did not know yeah. that. It's that. <laughs> so, um, so I think we'd like to just, uh, you know, you can't imagine a, a car and a on a bus, you know, meeting. So this will just be one way north. Won't end well. Yeah. Um, and then the private parking, which would be the familiar users, they would also use Hawthorne Court. The ramp to the underground mm -hmm. parking would be off of Hawthorne. Uh, next slide. And then, um, then they would uh, exit through the terminal. So you you see, we'll have about ninety five cars. Or so associated with the apartments, and so that could amount to you know maybe, let's say, every student goes out twice in that car, which I think would be pretty high, you know, pretty high. You know, we'll have two hundred car trips that travel through the bus terminal per day, which is just not that big a deal. They'll be random. Uh, next slide, um, and then all the public parking is just very simple. You just come in and out on Lake Street, you know, and you have <clears throat> easy uh, traffic flow. Next slide. Um, uh, you just say you're just saying that it's separated. Yeah, yeah, separated. Okay. So sometimes my own man. It's like a series <clears throat> of trust falls for you and that. Yeah. So what this will do though is uh, we are um, to separate this, we will reduce the public parking by about nine ninety-five stalls, which is about nine percent for the combined Francis and Lake Street ramps. Uh, next slide. You said nine? 95. 95%. 95%. Oh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Instead of 1.5 underground floors, okay. there is only one underground floor devoted to private parking. Um, you know, part of the reason for that is we just felt like, well, it's too difficult to have visitors, you know, going and use parking that's underground. Uh, next uh, slide. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, we have showed this to some of the elders, and there were some. Uh, questions. Well, how often are, are or were the, the removed stalls used? Uh, next bullet. About 33 days a year. So we what we did is we did a, a parking occupancy, figured out how often did we we go into this threshold. And so from 2017 to 2020 is about 33 days a year. Next slide. Uh, 60 to 70 percent were for events at Memorial Union or UW sporting events. Okay. Uh, next slide. Uh, how much would constructing these 95 stalls cost? Four million. Seven million. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seventy-four million, seventy-four thousand dollars a stall. Uh, next, uh, how much revenue would all of the 95 stalls generate in a year? About ten thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. So you can see that it's really not a. <clears throat> there's a high cost and not a, not a lot of revenue generation from that. Uh, how much cost to operate the 95 stalls a year? About half a million dollar uh, of average bond payment. So basically, if we were to finance the seven million dollars kind of conventionally at um, three and a half percent, you know, the parking utility would have to, you know, service that debt. And that's, and then uh, it would be another uh, next bullet, about another two hundred dollars in operating. $200,000 in operations, you know, just manning it, the maintenance and the like. 
So we're, uh, <laughs> we're, uh, yeah, yeah, 500 year payback. Okay. So, <laughs> well, last then. Yeah. so, yeah. so um, you know, this still is a concern. And I think we want to um, be, because uh, the parking is, is meant to serve the downtown and all the uses downtown. So this is kind of a graphical representation of when we would, you know, based on the 2000, um, um, I think this is 2017 to 2020. So this, the title of this slide is incorrect. This is three years of, of data. Um, it's 2017. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, so you can see, you know, how frequently do we actually go into these stalls and actually need them. Uh, next slide. Uh, uh, so, you know, some of our downtown stakeholders says, well, when were they used and the like. And um, <clears throat> so to the extent that, that I could, you know, I looked at the UW calendar and some of the other downtown calendars and saw well, when we use these parking stalls, what was hope happening. And often it was a, uh, Often it was a UW football event or something to that effect. Now, sometimes there would be events uh, where probably that was not the reason why the, the parking garage was full, full. Like for instance, VO5 played on September 2nd, which VO5 I think is very good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're playing tonight on, on, on the on day and dances, right? But they they probably didn't fill up the... Um, <laughs> the um, but they're good. They're good. <laughs> so... Um, so you can you can kind of see so so next to us line um, the the State Street Campus Garage um, is actually quite close to um, the East Campus Mall um, BRT station. So we're hoping that for a lot of these downtown events, people will use you know the five minute service that's going to be available with BRT rather than than driving down. Um, uh, some questions. Well, what are some of the <clears throat> the university's uh, plans. And this is uh, the university plan for parking lots. Uh, the yellow represents existing parking lots. Uh, the blue represents a planned additions that would be underground. And then um, the green represents planned additions that would be above ground. And there is one that is close to uh, the coal center, you know, which saw not all, but a lot of when the Lake Street ramp was used fully it had to do with events at the Coal Center. Um, <clears throat> so what would it take to keep the 95 stalls? Um, let's say we were to construct that extra underground. Uh, we'd have to pay that $7 million in construction cost. Uh, next slide. Now acknowledge that the stalls would probably be, only be able to be accessed off Hawthorne Court. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so that would be difficult for unfamiliar drivers to enter and exit through the bus terminal. But we could use it for monthly parkers because we do, you know, rent out <clears throat> to monthly parkers. Um, what it does do, though, is it subsidizes monthly and event parking to a large extent. You know, we're kind of using a half million dollar bond payment every year so that people can have some monthly par parking. Uh, what we could do is, or we could reduce <clears throat> or eliminate the 24-7 monthly parkers to make room for transient parkers. So that's really kind of a policy decision. To see right now, we have 358 permits, right? And so basically what we're doing is we're providing car storage for, for people to leave their car there. So out of a thousand, or about 1,100 spaces, you know, 358 of them are being used full-time by people that live downtown. Um, and, it, you know, we might just say, well, maybe it's more important to have room for events or parking for businesses, you know, transient parking. Uh, then they, they did ask, well, could you tell us who, you know, because there are some people who are, are worried that, that what will happen if we lose these 95? So, so <clears throat> um, this is kind of the geolocations of the people that own uh, those 24-7 parking permits, okay? And really a lot of it um, uh, tends to be students. About a third of them basically are um, 
originated right on the hub on campus and the James. Right? And so that those are kind of the, the users of the 24-7 downtown. Um, and so that's kind of, that's, uh, that's it. Uh, I probably should have put in a slide. So uh, maybe we'll go back to the previous slide. Um, in, in many ways, when we reconstruct this ramp, we will have to uh, eliminate many of those 24 seven permits anyhow, right? We're taking 1100 stalls and then we have to tear down to 500 stalls, right? And so for <clears throat> two years, we're gonna have half the capacity at this location. And so we'll probably have to dial back our 24 seven permits as well. And so that would just be a, a logical time to say, what is the policy for this garage? Um, are we here to support, you know, kind of a retail business commercial or are we providing parking spaces for uh, people that live downtown and students that live downtown? Um, there are a lot of other transportation options, you know, for people that live downtown other than car. That's, um, that's kind of the, it. it, it is very parking focused because some of the alders, Alder Bennett, Alder uh, Vivier, Alder Heck, asked us to interact, you know, with people that have an interest downtown, which includes DMI and this this committee, you know, and uh, <clears throat> just to get a, a pulse on to how how do we receive the reduction, you know, the nine percent reduction in this parking garage. Tom, related to that. Um... You know, you mentioned the, the BRT route, and I know, like for some prairie, we'll have Saturday service to go to Badger Games and that kind of thing, where currently that's not the case. Are there any other um, outside of Madison communities that will also have that benefit that right now they may be, I got have to get in my car, I'm going to drive all the way, you know, downtown to the game. Yeah. Um, whereas if they could get on in their own community. So, uh, yeah, Middleton will. Okay. And um, <clears throat> Middleton will. And then, uh, I hate to say this, but it's, it's, a, it's a fact. People, even now, you know, will park on, use on-street parking and then get on transit to get downtown. And so that will be available. Um, we are going to be soliciting for proposals for the North-South BRT. This fall, we hope to have a consultant under, under contract, and so that would um, the north south BRT um, would probably extend into Fitchburg. Okay, it it'll go up to the north, but it, <clears throat> the current plans are for it to extend down into Fitchburg, down in the Lacey Road area. Because yeah, leaving the game by bus is awesome. They're like, just get on the bus and <laughs> get out of there. So I mean, it's it's. It's a good way to get back and forth to yeah. game. You know, if you think about it, you know, the end of an event is kind of a hot mess, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, by nature. <laughs> Everybody yeah. would do it at the same time. Yeah. We do have a comment from uh, Dave Benferrato in the chat. Uh, suggestions uh, for how to peak parking demands at city ramps during known large events as a condition of obtaining a city event permit, the event organizer must submit a TDM, a transportation demand management plan, uh, perhaps offering free bus passes, valet, bike parking, et cetera. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. That's uh, Dave Ben Bravo. Uh, how many of those 358 monthly passes are subscribed? Uh, there, those are the ones that are subscribed. No, I mean, are they fully subscribed? 358 people. Oh, are, they they at, are they at, you only allow 358? No, yeah. So it's not like we allocate 358. Ah. 358 permits are in people's hands right now. And how many could there be? Depends on demand. Yeah, it kind of depends on the demand. You know, our <clears throat> our parking garages are not as full as they used to be. Okay. So there could be five hundred if you allowed it. Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. We've got a question from Chris. Oh, thank, you. <laughs> yeah. thank you. Sorry, Chris, we're coming at all angles here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Sorry to surprise you. Uh, so the uh, thank you for the presentation. The bus terminal looks great, and with luck. Madison will be getting a train station too. And so I was wondering, uh, are you planning for them to work in tandem somehow or complement each other? Yeah, a, a lot of that will depend on our station location. Um, mm -hmm. Study, which we had a, a kickoff meeting last week, 
uh, and we'd like for that to get going. Um, I'm going to say um, with rail, there's a little, there's a few more constraints, right? We generally will have to put a station near where there's rails, <laughs> and then we um, and then uh, there's you know there's some dynamics. Uh, it's probably easier um, to get to Minnesota and Minneapolis if if the station were on the east side. However, I think there is a desire uh, by Amtrak to capture some of the, the downtown business, you know, the downtown riders. And so mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, uh, <clears throat> I think on that one, we're just going to let the process play out, you know, and see how <clears throat> it, it works. We would like to, um, where is, um, did Justin, <clears throat> is Justin Stone? He is not, no, he had to oh, drop off. He had to drop off, right. He dropped off when he knew the questions were coming. For him. Well, I was going to say, <laughs> just we, kidding, just kidding. We would like the station and the BRT to be uh, close, right? Yeah. yeah. So, um, and, <clears throat> and so I, I wanted to reemphasize that to Justin. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, we have a, a, a Chris. I'm sorry. Was there a follow up to that? Uh, no, I mean, I, I know that the, you know, you don't know the station location yet, but I mean, as uh, a BRT connection sounds like that would be really helpful for people who want to transfer from one to the other. So thanks. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we do have a comment from Chuck Strasser in, in the chat as well. I've heard from folks who park cars uh, all the way down at businesses on <clears throat> Verona Road, south of the Beltline, and bike up the Southwest Pass to Camp Randall for football games. Uh, people will find other ways to get downtown if given enough incentive. Just a comment. Yeah. I would just add on to, to the BRT station comment of making those last mile connections to facilitating yeah. bike parking, bike share, all of those kinds of things. Kurt. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I'm not going to, the messenger and to Bill Putman, is Bill still on? Is, uh, is on. yes. Oh, yeah. We're part of the group that put us in the middle in. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the final selection is one thing, but the sad thing, even the two local groups weren't even in the final selection. Mm -hmm. And part of the thing is, just so the city knows in the future, at least Madison is transparent and published them all, where Dane County hasn't even done anything in the Lion Center. It's all secret. But when you put an RFP, there is a lot of work that goes into it, a lot oh, yeah. of thoughts that go into it. And what you hope to be is at least because you put out your RP, you're not going to put everything in there because it's wide open to it. And, and it felt like it all came be down to be what was the cost of land you're putting into it. Um, if you could at least, if you're one of the people who put it in, at least get a 15 minute interview to come in and explain what you were doing. Because part of what there was more than just the um, inner city bus station. And I, actually we're dealing with the different bus companies how do you want to do this they're going to use it because they don't want it they think it's ridiculous because right now the way it does they just have a cell phone everybody has it but we went especially with badger bus and john meyer uh how do you want it how are you going to come in here the interesting thing we couldn't which is nice is as a fall too we couldn't use hoffman court because it wasn't part of this and hoffman court's going to be a very difficult thing to come in with the term radius and everything else i do like the private parking be underneath. The other interesting thing, when you drop down that extra parking, will you be able to get extra housing? In? That gives you better increment. So, and I had reversed the C, looking at the capital instead of the, there's not a good view going the other way. So all I'm saying is, if you could have each of the goods come in, just give a 15 minute thing, because part of it was inner city bus stations, that was one issue, how can work? It was an issue when I asked finance, I didn't have the public garages, the public restaurants, but some of the older people said, we don't really want them. We were putting it into the coffee house. So it's washed and maintained and everything else. The other interesting thing was here is, as I went through, we have a lot of apartments, our rental agents, what's the quality of life down there for everybody else when we worked on that. So all I ask is in the future, it's fine if you're out, but you weren't even explaining what you were doing and how you put it together. Plus how we had a construction cost on the control, what we're going to build the ramp for and how we're going to do it. Because you bring in Walker for parking, you bring in the bus people, you bring everything else in. So all I ask is, if there's an RP, at least say, hi, how you do? We don't like you. And you don't ever get a feedback <laughs> where you want to look about Because when you go, because when you go after an RP, it's very serious and a lot of work and you bring a great team together. And this is a critical thing here. So that's all I ask in the future is just, 
hey, come and pat us on the head and send us off. But uh, yeah. just ignore us. Yeah, I think um, I think they they can interact with you. They talk with you, but I think what you're saying is it would have been nice to have been have been invited to an interview. I think right. that's right. Yeah, because your team is working several weeks ahead all the time working through that can work and with the reality of the constraints we all know later on that can change but right now i couldn't use hawthorne court and then there's the reality of everything working out so um that's all i ask thanks kurt more questions any other questions for tom yeah this is one no. I, I don't know that tom that this is in your purview if it would have been more to talk to the economic development people or whatever but i just look at there's that Orphan old McDonald's that's a, that's now a post office building. And that it's like, that's a terrible underuse of that little sliver. And it can't really get redeveloped because it's too small. And it's like, it would seem to f be better if it was somehow incorporated into this project. Yeah. Yeah. It's, on it. it's, too, it's this, too much. Too high. I really own, I'm sorry to interject. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> but, but when we looked at it, yeah. RFP was very clear. You work with that. That is owned by McCormick. And that's three million dollars just for that parcel. Yeah. Where it could be, you could tie it in later on, but yeah, I, that's I a private-owned property. Right. I, I don't know why they think that's worth that much when they can't really do anything with it because it's yeah. Yeah. There, there was a development team about two years ago that um had they were trying to assemble some of those pieces, and they had assembled like three out of the four. But you have to assemble like four. Yeah. Out of four. Yeah. That's a lot of money. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think we should acknowledge too, we're thankful that Jeff Brood is on the call today from uh, Mortensen as well, who is the developer. So I think you saw that, Tom, but just wanted to acknowledge that Jeff was on. So thank you to Mortensen for being here, who is the developer. We're currently working with the city on negotiations for this project. I've got a question, Tom. Could you talk to us a little bit about the opportunities for activating the Hawthorne Court space a little bit more with this? Mm. Yeah, so um, people have said that. <laughs> That's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. So, um, yeah, we can bring that into into the programming. We do think uh, there will be more just uh, traffic, you know, which is which is something. You know, there will be buses that go in every you know hour, and there will be you know cars. So there's that. <clears throat> but then uh, some of the other issues, you know, with with cameras, you know, would uh, we can we can look into that yeah you know we do have cameras there now and yet there are still you know some concerns so we have to mm -hmm. figure that out and just just to follow up to this has been an issue the dmi has been looking at for a long time hot report is a it is a particularly tricky alley uh, yeah, uh namely late night sort of in in, in, in 10 10 p.m to 2 a.m there's you know different uses in that back alley there's one full apartment building that's surrounded by other buildings in the middle of Hawthorne Court. There's another uh, old parking entrance that has to happen for a private parking lot on the opposite side towards State Street. Uh, so we've been working with um, the School of, of Human Ecology um, and to try to find new ideas and art and lighting and, and, and sort of the set tent, which is crime prevention through environmental design. We've had conversations with Tom, that's what he was mentioning. Uh, we've also had conversations with Alder Heck, Alder Revere, uh, the architects, uh, I definitely have to check in with the team at Mortensen as well about what could happen. Uh, but people seem to understand that that is an important part. It's not just the back side of a building. It's important to animate that side of the building for uh, the whole area. Yeah, it's very, I mean, yeah, there's, you know, a famous video of a guy backing a car up at 85 miles an hour in the parking lot and almost hitting somebody and it didn't yeah. luckily happen. I mean, it's, yeah, it's tough. Yeah. And uh, Jeff says, hello, everyone. Thank you for letting listen uh, to the discussion for more. <clears throat> more questions for Tom? Oh, sorry, Morgan, I just took over. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just did send a story of your area, but sort of. Um, is TIFF going into this? Mm -hmm. How much? Do you know? Uh, about 15. 15. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think um, and that's from the new one. The yeah, new that's one. the State Street to 50. The, the, um, a 21 million will be kicked off total uh, with other various pots. There's some uh, funding for planning. There's some funding for small businesses, uh, but the majority, the three quarters of it, is uh, the projected increment. Which, honestly, that increment could go up significantly with the amount of development that's happening in that area. Right. Uh, that includes the Madison College campus. 
So it, it basically takes State Street all the way and then kind of <clears> kicks uh, towards the north um, where you have the one block of Madison College. And as we know from yesterday's event, uh, WHPC, uh, Wisconsin Housing uh, Preservation Corps, is actively looking at a project on that site. So. <clears throat> Well, I think we're coming down to our last minute here. So um, thank you so much, Tom, for the presentation. Thanks for the great questions and discussion. Um, we will follow up with you on the agenda for the upcoming meetings. We yes, it had to change. Yes, We have to change a little bit. We hope yeah. to talk about strategic plan next time, but we will need a little more time to work through that. Um, so we will get that information together, let you all know. Um, anything else you want to share in closing? Jason? No, uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you at uh, DMI events. Join us the next one. What's up, Tom Tom Breakfast on the 25th and then our annual celebration on uh, August 19th, although we'll meet before that. September 19th, September 19th thank you. <laughs> September 19th. Yes, don't show up next week. It's not going to be a Friday night. That's game dances. All right, thank you all very much. Bye, Dave. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.